Have you ever wondered what your body is made of? Like really made of? Let's shrink down to the microscopic level and take a journey into the incredible world of the cell. Every living thing, plants, animals, humans, even bacteria, is made up of cells. And these cells, they're not just empty bubbles. They're buzzing with activity, almost like tiny cities where each part or organelle plays a special role to keep everything running smoothly. So whether you're looking at a leaf or your own skin under a microscope, you're looking at an entire world of organized chaos. Welcome to Cell City. Let's start with the border of this microscopic city, the cell membrane. It's like the protective wall around a castle or the security gate at the airport. The cell membrane is a thin but tough outer layer that controls what comes in and what goes out. It lets in the good stuff like nutrients and oxygen and keeps out harmful substances just like a strict bouncer at a party. Inside the cell, everything floats in a jelly-like fluid called the cytoplasm. Think of the cytoplasm as the roads, the sidewalks, and the public spaces where all the organelles are placed and move around. It's not just a filler, it's where chemical reactions happen where materials are transported, and where the whole city stays alive and busy. Right at the center of the cell is a large round structure that looks like a boss's office. That's the nucleus, the control center or brain of the cell. The nucleus holds your DNA, which is like the instruction manual or blueprint for everything your body does. DNA tells the cell how to grow, how to divide, and even what kind of cell it's going to be. If the cell were a company, the nucleus would be the CEO giving out orders to the departments. Inside the nucleus, you'll also find the nucleolus, which is like a smaller office that produces ribosomes, tiny but mighty structures that build proteins. Speaking of ribosomes, these little dots are either floating freely in the cytoplasm or stuck onto a network of folded membranes called the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short. The ER is like a giant conveyor belt system. It comes in two versions, the rough ER, which has ribosomes attached to it and helps with building and transporting proteins, and the smooth ER, which doesn't have ribosomes and focuses on making fats and detoxifying chemicals. If you imagine a factory, the rough ER is the production line where workers assemble parts, and the smooth ER is where lipids or fats are made and harmful waste is processed. These two ERs work together like departments in a big manufacturing plant. Once the proteins are made, they're not just left lying around. They need to be packaged, labeled, and shipped to the right place. That's where the Golgi apparatus comes in. This organelle looks like a stack of pancakes or folded ribbons and acts like the cell's post office or packaging center. It modifies proteins, adds tags to them so they go to the right destination and then packs them into small vesicles that transport them within the cell or send them outside. It's kind of like the Amazon fulfillment center of the cell, receiving, packaging, labeling, and shipping 24-7. But none of this activity could happen without energy, right? That's why we need to zoom in on the mitochondria, often called the powerhouse of the cell. These bean-shaped organelles are where glucose or sugar is broken down to release energy in the form of a molecule called ATP. It's like a power station, burning fuel to provide electricity to the entire city. Without mitochondria, the cell wouldn't have the energy to do anything. Here's a fun fact. Mitochondria even have their own DNA, and scientists think they might have once been independent organisms that merged with larger cells millions of years ago. Mind-blowing. As with any busy city, there's bound to be trash and broken parts lying around. That's where the lysosomes come in. Think of them as the cell's garbage disposal or recycling center. These small, round structures are filled with powerful enzymes that break down waste, digest old organelles, and clean up the cell's messes. If there's something broken or harmful inside the cell, lysosomes get rid of it. Without them, the cell would fill up with junk and quickly stop working. Let's not forget about vacuoles. 
In animal cells, vacuoles are usually small and store things like water, salts, and food particles. But in plant cells, there's typically one large central vacuole that takes up most of the cell's space. It's like a huge water tank, storing nutrients and maintaining pressure to keep the plant upright and healthy. When the vacuole is full, the plant stands tall. When it's empty, the plant wilts. It's a pretty clever system. So far, most of what we've seen applies to both animal and plant cells, but plant cells have a few unique features that make them extra special. First, they have a cell wall, a strong, rigid layer outside the cell membrane. This wall is made of cellulose and gives plant cells their firm structure. If you've ever wondered why plants can grow tall and stiff without bones, it's thanks to the cell wall. It also helps protect the cell from damage and maintains its shape, kind of like a brick wall supporting a building. Now here's something super cool, chloroplasts. These are the green organelles found only in plant cells and some algae. They contain a pigment called chlorophyll, which captures sunlight and uses it to perform photosynthesis. That means chloroplasts can literally turn sunlight, carbon dioxide and water into sugar and oxygen. It's like a solar panel that makes food instead of electricity. That sugar then travels to the mitochondria to be turned into usable energy. So yes, in plants, chloroplasts and mitochondria are teammates, turning light into sugar and then sugar into energy. How amazing is that? So let's quickly zoom out and compare. Both plant and animal cells have membranes, cytoplasm, a nucleus, ribosomes, ER, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, lysosomes, and vacuoles. But plant cells have a cell wall and chloroplasts, and their vacuole is much larger. That's why plant cells look more rectangular under a microscope, while animal cells are more rounded and flexible. Throughout this journey, we've seen how a cell is not just a random blob. It's an organized, efficient, and incredibly complex system. The nucleus runs the show, the ribosomes and ER make the products, the Golgi packages them, the mitochondria power it all, the lysosomes clean up, and the vacuoles store supplies. In plant cells, the chloroplasts capture sunlight, and the cell wall keeps everything standing tall. Together, they create a living, breathing city, one so small we need a microscope to see it, but so vital that life wouldn't exist without it. And now it's your turn to think like a cell scientist. Which organelle do you think is the most important? Is it the mitochondria powering every move, the nucleus giving out orders, or maybe the chloroplasts making food from sunlight? Let us know what you think in the comments below. We'd love to hear your opinion. And if you enjoyed this tiny tour through Cell City, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. So